during our stay at Taimasu, our next Amazonian lodge was the Rio Azul Jungle Lodge, which sits appropriately enough on the banks of the Rio Azul, a tributary of the Rio São Benedito that runs alongside Taimasu. Before driving to Rio Azul, we spent a night at the Fazenda Anasia, a relatively new lodge in habitat that the owners are rewilding to attract bird life and birders alike. Complete with gardens and a very appealing pool. Having unpacked, we explored beyond the lodge and stopped at a lake that revealed a good selection of species, including a pair of crimson-crested woodpeckers, firstly the red-headed male, and then the female, which has a black forehead and a broad white line below the eye and onto the neck. A blue and yellow macaw, and a perched snail kite with a noisy but at the time hidden point-tailed palm creeper calling in the background. The palm creeper was eventually picked out amongst the palm fronds on the other side of the lake. Although recognised as a type of funarid, they have no close relationships to any particular species. Also a pair of Apollette Orioles. Early the next morning we drove east to an area near to the Rio Santa Helena. After dawn there were plenty of parrots around, including a pair of red fan parrots. Their name comes from the erectile feathers on the head, which can be fanned into a mane. A third individual was seen much closer. There was also a rather obscured chestnut-fronted macaw. And this pair of blue-headed parrots amongst a flock of six. Walking further down the track, we came across this ruddy pigeon. Flycatchers included a yellow terannulate. And a diminutive short-tailed pygmy tyrant. A male faciated ant shrike was from a pair that kept stubbornly hidden amongst the foliage. The track opened out into an area of recently felled open habitat. Both the common large woodpeckers were here. Firstly a male crimson crested woodpecker. And then a female lineated woodpecker. Nearby, a black-fronted nunbird was carrying food, as if waiting to feed a chick. Overhead were plumbious kites. A soaring short-tailed hawk. a magnificent king vulture, and a greater yellow-headed vulture, 
possibly an immature, as the head seemed very grey. An excellent mammal discovery was this pair of Snethlager's marmoset, also known as Amelia's marmoset. Both names work as they are named after Emilie Snethlager, a German-born Brazilian scientist. They are endemic to central Brazil, and as was obvious here, thankfully seem quite well adapted to disturbed environments. Returning to Alta Floresta, we located this ash-throated crake on land that Brad had recently purchased to build a new house. Back at the fazenda, a beautiful pair of confiding red and green macaws were feeding on a fruiting tree. <coughs> Different from scarlet macaws in having some red marking on the white face and green rather than yellow in the wings. After lunch, we made our way to Rio Azul, requiring another crossing of the Teles Perez River. It's a little incongruous that this river flows west rather than east. However, it eventually turns north before becoming the Tabayos River and eventually joining the Amazon. Before reaching the lodge, we stopped at Madesek Lake, an area of flooded palms where blue and yellow macaws were the star birds. They are often found around Mauritia palms, decapitated versions of which they use as nest sites. The lodge at Rio Azul was the most rustic, but also somehow the most authentic of those we stayed at on this trip. A communal restaurant lies at the centre, encircled by individual guest lodges. The grounds merge with the surrounding jungle, and it's a good place to scan from at dawn. A typical find was this eastern striolated puffbird. Blue and yellow macaws were most often seen here early morning only. You can never tire of watching macaws. Greater yellow-headed vultures regularly roosted around the lodge. very similar to the lesser yellow-headed vulture of more open habitats, but when perched they appear longer tailed and the yellow on the face extends onto the throat. A few pairs of swallow-winged puffbirds were resident. They were often seen on the ground with some burrowing out nests in small embankments. Most often they were on favoured perches, scanning for insects. Others carrying food had presumably got chicks waiting in their burrows. This bar-breasted piculet was also seen around the lodge. 
a patch of yellow on the forehead identified it as a male. Also a male yellow tufted woodpecker. A slender billed xenops. A couple of Guianan terannulates. A recent split from slender footed terannulate, from which it differs by call and by having a white throat and paler yellow underparts. One of a pair of rusty margined flycatchers. Plus a trio of scaled doves foraging on the lodge's vegetable patch. This is really a bird of tropical savannah, no doubt attracted here from the nearby ranches. And a curl-crested arasari feeding in the trees behind the vegetable patch. One of a pear present. Hummingbirds included a pair of black-throated mangoes. This is the female, with a white line running down each side of a black throat and breast. The male had an anomalous white feather on one wing. A flock of tanagers included this blue-necked tanager. and a beautiful green and gold tanager. A blue-necked jacamar by the river was another quality bird found close to the lodge. Of course we had a few trips out on the Rio Azul itself during our three night stay. Down at the landing stage, a male glossy antrike was often in the adjacent bushes. There was plenty to see cruising downstream of the lodge. Lovely white banded swallows were fairly common along the stretch of the river and included this juvenile. Not far from the lodge was a small section of rapids. This was favoured by white winged swallows. On the banks of the river were a pair of fulvous crested tanagers. Only the males have the crest, which is usually concealed. And an area of palms revealed a point-tailed palm creeper. It required an early morning visit to see one of the river's specialities. And surprisingly enough, it's a hummingbird. A handsome male crimson topaz. They feed along the river margins at this time of day before disappearing back into the forest. The female lacks the gaudiness of the male and is mostly green with chestnut outer tail feathers. Morning on the river was also the best time to see white-bellied parrots. These are the yellow-tailed form and as such sometimes considered a separate species. And more entertaining blue and yellow macaws.
one pair had staked out a broken tree trunk, no doubt being considered as a possible nest site. Further along was a female chestnut woodpecker. And a female golden green woodpecker. With its diagnostic yellow lined face and pale blue eyes. Drifting downstream with the current was a way of searching for species that are characteristically shy and paid off with the discovery of this male sun grebe. Somewhat surprisingly, it was initially found out on open water, before flying back into more typical habitat under overhanging branches. As at Taimasu, crystal clear streams fed into the main river. This one hosted what was probably a Peacock River stingray, one of the most widespread Amazonian freshwater stingrays. The river also provides access to a number of birding trails. One of these is the Heliconia Trail. Here we soon came across a couple of white-cheeked spider monkeys. They are only found in the Brazilian Amazon basin. Bird scene included a white bellied toady tyrant. A very mobile male band tailed ant bird. female Zingu scale-backed antbird and this ball-shaped collared puffbird. They nest in burrows and this one had probably just completed a bout of digging which accounted for the pronounced quiff. The light on the river late afternoon was fabulous. As it turned to dusk, we spotlighted some reclusive residents. Firstly, a South American tapir in the water by the riverbank. And then a Cuvier's dwarf caiman, the smallest crocodilian in the Americas. The Yatoba Trail can be accessed from the lodge grounds. One of the first birds seen was another blue-necked jacamar. Its alternative name of blue-cheeked jacamar is probably more fitting, as there is a patch of blue on the side of the face, rather than on the neck. Down near the forest floor was a ringed ant pipit. There are two species of ant pipit, very closely related to each other, and only recently considered to be a type of tyrant flycatcher.
there was also a dwarf tyrant mannequin. The call is distinctive. But the bird more often heard than seen. They are renowned canopy dwellers, so views like this are exceptional. A night visit revealed this roosting grey tinamou along the same trail. Another trail from the lodge follows an old logging track. Our progress was being monitored by a troop of red-handed howler monkeys. Another primate endemic to Brazil. A greyish mourner was further along the trail. We eventually came to a more open area, with a screaming peer calling in the background. In the surrounding trees was a female yellow-throated woodpecker. Plus eye-level views of a rusty-breasted nunlet. On the race here, the breast is buff without any rufous tones. A pair of bronzy jacamars always above us and therefore rather silhouetted. One was seen carrying food. Also a male Amazonian trogon. And a plush crested jay. Our last afternoon at the lodge was spent around the estate ranch. The open habitat here provided access to a different selection of species. A pair of masked yellow throats were at a small marsh. Only the male has the black bandit mask. A striped cuckoo, sitting out a rain shower. They are one of only three brood parasitic cuckoos in the Americas and have a widespread range in pasture and scrub from mid-Argentina north to Mexico. A male chestnut-bellied seed finch also known as lesser seed finch, when lumped with a larger, thick-billed seed finch. And smooth-billed arnies. Grassland sparrows sang from fence posts. This is in effect the South American version of the grasshopper sparrow found in North America. Burrowing owls were common along the main track. We counted 11 in what seemed perfect habitat for them. Perched more distantly was a white-tailed hawk. 
This individual is of the distinctive pale form. By late afternoon, parrots began to arrive, led by a pair of scarlet macaws. Then blue and yellow macaws. A single white-eyed parakeet appeared, ahead of more to follow. They are one of the commonest and most widespread South American parrots, preferring forest edge and these open savanna-like environments. American black vultures settled onto their roosts. And an aplomado falcon perched on nearby overhead wires in the last light of the day easy to identify with its very distinctive white eyebrow. As dusk preceded a beautiful sunset, this was the end of an excellent few days at Rio Azul.